The WRC had now really settled into the groove of operating under the World Rally Car rules, and with the addition of contesting things like the Junior and Production Championships, and the slow but clear emergence of certain dominant manufacturers and drivers, there really was a lot to look out for. 2005 acts as a very good midpoint to this era of the WRC, a point where a lot of the traditional and older characteristics of rally still remained forefront, but the truly modern era of the WRC was trying to emerge. Citroen obviously was the undeniable frontrunner this year. The combination of their incredible Cesaro WRC and a team of great drivers led by the promising Sebastian Loeb meant that no one could really deny that they were on top of the world. However, there were changes beginning to happen. For one, manufacturers like Subaru were still trying to play catch-up, pushing their cars further and further. In 2003, they debuted the Blob Eye iteration of the WRC, and this would be followed in 2006 by the Hawkeye iteration, though following their driver's title in 2003, they would not see another championship win. Ford, after playing second fiddle to so many manufacturers for so long, had finally decided to step up their game. Taking their focus, which had been in competition since 1999, they injected just a little more power into it, and what resulted was the Ford Focus RS WRC 2006, though confusingly it would first compete in the 2005 season. The engine was downsized from the production Focus's 2.5 litre to a 2 litre Duratec unit making 300 brake horsepower. However, Ford only had the thing up and running for the final rally of the 2005 season, and so the 2005 manufacturer's title went to Citroen as no one was able to stand up to them, yet another manufacturer admitted to the prestigious Hattrick Club, though this definitely wasn't the end. Loeb took his second consecutive driver's title, finishing with a huge lead of 56 points over Peter Solberg. He also broke the record for the most rallies won in one season, with a truly outstanding 10, obliterating the previous record of 6, which, to be fair, was a record also held by him. Add to that the fact that he had also beat the record for the most consecutive wins, with 6 beating Timo Salona's previous record of just 4. Sebastian Loeb truly was in his golden age. Despite their victory, however, Citroen maintained their plan of leaving the WRC at the end of the season, and by proxy, Peugeot was to withdraw also, both to work on new entries for the 2007 season. Mitsubishi and Skoda also withdrew, though their reasons were separate, and they would continue to compete in succeeding years through non-factory teams. This meant that the 2006 season had a huge blow to the manufacturers taking part, with a record low of just three. Ford and Subaru were technically the only manufacturers to take part, as Citroen was competing through the Kronos Racing Team. Their reasoning for withdrawing over this season was to develop their successor to the Cesaro WRC, which had finally reached its end-of-life status. But 2006 did see some changes. For example, cars now had to be fitted with mechanical differentials, water injection was now prohibited, and the changing of certain parts across rallies was limited. There were also two categories of manufacturer created, M1 and M2. M1 had to compete in all rallies, use the most recently homologated car, and use two cars of the same make on all rallies. By contrast, M2 only has to compete in 10 or more, can only use cars homologated in the prior year, and also has to use two cars of the same make across however many different rallies they compete in. This sounds confusing, but let's face it, most changes are. In addition, safety changes were implemented, such as required use of a head and neck device on all drivers' and co-drivers' helmets to reduce the risk of injury in said areas. As for the standings this year, Ford was able to take its second ever manufacturer's title an astonishing 27 years after its first in 1979. Sebastian Loeb wrangled his hat-trick, this time racing for Kronos, though in contrast to his monster of the year of 2005, only edged out Marcus Gronholm by a single point. Though this is explainable, as a mountain bike accident midway through the season prevented him from taking part in the final four rallies, which arguably lost Kronos the title. 
2007 then saw Citroen's previous year's effort come to fruition with the introduction of the Citroen C4 WRC, a 1.9 litre 315 brake horsepower motor that straight out of the gate was a promising successor to the Cesara. However, it wasn't quite into the groove of things yet and Ford was able to take its third manufacturer's title and was the last to be earned by a Focus. However, none of these items were going to hinder the unstoppable force that was Sebastian Loeb, swooping in to take his fourth consecutive title, again with a narrow lead over Gronholm. 2008 was a similar story with Loeb adding a fifth trophy to his cabinet and Citroen made a return to the top after three years with their fourth win. 2008 would also see the Japanese finally take a bow and exit the sport after many, many years. Suzuki, who had only just entered the SX4 WRC into competition and longtime competitor Subaru, both withdrew at the end of the season, the common reason from the two being the economic crisis which had taken a huge toll on the automotive industry. The Subaru World Rally Team had competed consistently for 20 whole years since 1989 and their Impreza had won a record 43 rallies in its career. The team, the manufacturer and the car have not been seen in the WRC since. This left the 2009 season looking quite empty. Only two manufacturers were taking part, being Citroen and Ford, though this was supported by a number of teams and privateer entries of course. The previous M1 and M2 categories for manufacturers had also been renamed to Manufacturer and Manufacturer Team, respectively. In many ways, the 2009 season was a carbon copy of 2008. Citroen took yet another manufacturer's title, this being their fifth, and Loeb secured yet another driver's title, edging out onto the top spot by just one point over Mikko Havonen. The FIA also decided to introduce something called round rotation this year, where certain events will be added and dropped year on year to entice more candidates to enter the competition. It's easy to think that this period of the WRC was much slower in its evolution than previous eras. However, while this may be true in certain aspects, a lot of other things were changing behind the scenes. A prime example of this is in the name itself. World Rally Championship. Despite this name, most of the events of most calendar years took place within Europe. A real effort was undertaken in the 2000s to spread the WRC to new countries and regions both in Europe and around the world. Examples like Bulgaria, Poland, Jordan, Mexico, Germany, Japan and Cyprus all either made their WRC debuts or returns after long hiatuses during the 2000s. Safety obviously was also an aspect that was worked on, especially after two fatal accidents. The first came at the 2005 Wales Rally GB after British driver Michael Park lost his life after his Peugeot 307 left the track and struck a tree head on. This was followed at the 2006 Rally Catalunya's junior event when German co-driver Jörg Bastok got out of his Citroen C2 and was struck by the Ford Fiesta ST of Barry Clark. These were the first fatalities in the sport since 1993 which signalled the need for safety to be brought to the forefront of what needed to be improved upon next. This was all symbolic that, despite being far removed from the infamous Group B era, rallying was still a sport capable of taking lives. But now, the sport was entering a new decade and a vital few years in the longevity and survival of the sport. Many new rule changes were impending and no one really knew what they were going to be bringing to the table. Citroen and especially Sebastian Loeb were in their prime as the sport entered the 2010s. But would it last? And for how long? <laughs>